Hey guys, and welcome to Tutorial Grid. I'm your host, Cherokee, and we're going to be going over a uh, new effect that was submitted for this slow motion rain. It goes off of the uh, 2000 frames per second rain 7D video that I'll put a link in the description, uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, what we'll be creating are all these little slow motion rain droplets. You will need footage that is slow motion or use a plugin called Twixter to create the effect. Uh, I didn't want to use Twixter because it looked kind of funny over this mesh, but I will show you how to make this, uh, these dots, uh, rain droplets and 3D and all that stuff. Uh, but what it kind of looks like is this right here. You got the slow motion and plow, it goes right back into the rain. So let's see that again. Slow motion, slow motion, and more slow motion. Uh, I'm not gonna show you how to do this, but well, I will show you how to do this little quick little rain effect as well as the slow motion. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right into this tutorial. Oh yeah, let's go ahead and go into Facebook and uh, make sure to like us on Facebook at Avid Productions 479, uh, facebook.com slash Avid Productions 479, or the Tutorial Grid at uh, facebook.com. So facebook.com slash Tutorial Grid. Also check us out on Twitter because we want to, uh, to see you guys, as well as like us on YouTube. Like us on YouTube. YouTube is good. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. So to create this effect, we're going to go to composition, new composition. Uh, right now, mine's in 720 because uh, I used the slow motion footage. So I'll just go ahead and go into 720, 25. Uh, I want to do 23.976 because that's what I shot in. And 30 seconds. All right. Okay, so now that we have this, what you're going to do is drag over your slow motion footage that you want to use. Now, I shot this on a very bright sunny day, so I had to try to manipulate this as much as possible to get this effect to work properly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find out where this point is that I want it to be slow motion which is going to be this right here. So you're going to go ahead and cut that down, move it over, play it through to where you want it to stop, and let's stop it right when I hit the ball. All right, so I'm going to stop it there. So we're just going to be doing the slow motion part, and I'll show you how to do the other part as well. Okay, now that we have our slow motion uh, clip selected that we want to make into slow, uh, since this was shot at 60 frames per second, we can actually make this a lot longer. So what you're going to do to do that is you're going to right click, go to time, and then you're going to go to time stretch. Now, to get the correct stretch time, you're going to actually be doing it at about 260% stretch factor. So it's going to stretch this out about four seconds. Now, we've got the slow motion, throwing up to the ball, and smacking it. But you see we have some skipped frames here where this is going to double up the frames. So let's go back into there, go back into time, uh, time stretch, let's pull that down to 255, okay, that works a little better, not as many skipped frames. So the next thing what we're going to do is all of this is going to be created in trap code particular, uh, except for one of the effects. Now the effect that is not going to be created in that is actually going to be the actual rain droplet itself, but we're going to go ahead and set our composition up with the effect. So you'll go to new or layer, new, solid, we're going to have, make it black. We're going to type in particular in our effects and presets. We'll drag that down over. 
All right, now we have this, which is awesome. Not really. Okay, so this creates our little particle plugin. You'll go down to emitter, and we're gonna change from point, from the emitter type, and we're gonna go to box. Now what this does is it allows you to stretch this out as big as possible, or as big as you want it to look and just give it a little bit more added depth. So we're gonna go down here to emitter size and we're gonna check the uh, change the X value. And we're gonna pull that up past 720 because 720 is our aspect. So I believe I'm at 1250. So let's move that up to there. It's actually over 1200 is our aspect because 720 is actually how tall this is. So we'll move that up emitter size Y, pull that down. I mean, you don't have to. I usually recommend pulling it down so that way pixels don't start off frame. So just pull that down to zero. And emitter size Z to 50. From 50 to a lot. I mean, we're gonna want this thing to look legit. So you're gonna have some small particles in the background and some bigger particles up front. So this is gonna look really cool. All right. Now that we've done that, we are going to change where the uh, position of our effect is going to be. So we'll go ahead and under position XY, we'll move the 360 mark, we'll just move it down. Because moving it down actually move, moves this effect up. So we'll just move it up to where the pixels are kind of out of frame. All right, so then whenever we have this kind of created, you can see these they kind of fall, but we're gonna have to change the lifespan of those. So what we'll do is go to particle, life, and just turn that up. Just turn that up to probably like anything past five. So, I mean, 15, 20, it'll be just fine. So now these particles are gonna be raining down, but they're very slow and that's unfortunate. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to physics, air, we're gonna turn the gravity up to 10, and under the air section right here, we will turn wind uh, Y to negative, that way it's forcing it down, and our wind Z up just a little bit that way it gives a little bit more additive effect of having this this stuff fall so now we have this kind of slow falling snowy looking stuff but we don't want snow we don't want snow okay so now we'll just move this over to where that is fully in into our composition here and we're going to turn the spin frequency off completely so hit zero fade in spin zero air resistance rotation click that and let's take a look at what this looks like and we've got all right this still looks like snow because uh, you can see these particles are just kind of moving in different directions and we don't want that so We'll go back up into our emitter. Velocity, we'll type in zero, no velocity. We'll also, uh, velocity random, zero. Velocity, velocity distribution, zero. Velocity from motion, zero. So we just wanna completely zero that out. And now we have some just straight falling down particles, which is good. So this is gonna match about what we've got going on but it's going a little faster a little faster than I want it to so we'll go back down to our physics and under air let's turn the uh, wind Y up just a little bit to about maybe nine or seven depending on how slow your footage is if it's really slow if it is at the 2000 frames per second most likely you'll have your wind down to negative one that way it gives it that still kind of effect but this is hopefully going to work pretty well so this is kind of matching my project here on how this range should actually look 
And then look at my fat smack of the tennis ball. All right. So now that we kind of have our effect made for the rain, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, create our raindrop. Now I'm going to show you how to do it with Element, uh, Video Copilot Element, as well as uh, in a future tutorial I'll use Form. Uh, but there's a ton of different ways you can do this. But I'm going to show you how to use Element, or you can find a really cool rain droplet picture. Uh, from the internet as long as it has an alpha space you'll be able to use it just fine uh, but uh, to create a new uh, rain droplet to compose on top of this you'll go to uh, let's go to composition new composition and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do 500 well let's do 200 by 200 so it's just gonna be one big square hit okay and we'll go to layer, new, solid, hit OK, 200 by 200. And we'll do element and scene setup under element. All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to have uh, primitives. And what I used was this blob, which is cool. I like the blob. The blob makes me happy. All right. So we got the blob. And um, now on the effect that I saw on the 200 frames per second 7D video, it was very shiny. So you can use this kind of chromish kind of effect to get that kind of watery look. What I did, I would use the glass. It kind of gives it more of a kind of a sheen. But you can use any type of... Uh, effect you want. Let's go ahead and just use the chrome. That that looks like it would be a good selection for water. Um, and go over and hit OK. Alright, now that we have this blob, we're going to want to size it down. So go to group 1, particle look, and then size it down. Under size, bring it down to say to where it just, just fits right inside of this box. Okay? So, uh, there are two things you can do. You can either leave it as this blob and make a ping image, or you can make a video. Me, personally, I think it's not going to be shown so much uh, for uh, for the, the amount of time that I was going to use it for. Video is going to look a lot better because you'll actually show movement. So let's do video. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to rotation. And I'm going to go and hit timeline on our Y. No, I don't want Y. I want Z. So that way it rotates kind of like down. Okay. So we're going to hit our stopwatch. And we're going to bring it over, let's just say, six seconds. And we're going to just kind of move this around. Now, it can't be too much or else you're going to get this really kind of off looking thing. Because you want it to just kind of barely rotate. That way it just gives an added, added oomph to it. So, since we kind of cut it off at six seconds, let's go ahead and move this down. So it's going to have our cutoff point. So after that, we're going to make sure this is at full. We're going to go to layer. Uh, and we're going to go to composition, make movie. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a JPEG sequence. So we'll go ahead and hit lossless under our render, render settings. We're going to hit AVI and we're going to select. Actually, we're going to make a ping sequence, ping sequence. So go ahead and hit PNG sequence. And we're going to make sure our settings are going to be good. So we want RGB plus alpha, millions of colors to trillions of colors, and hit OK. We'll go ahead and change this. We're going to make a folder. We'll call it ping rain. 
We'll call this drop. Save and go ahead and render this out. All right, now that we have our ping sequence, we are going to go to file and import, import file. And we'll go to ping rain and select the first one and make sure ping sequence is selected. So that'll put all of that into a sequence. So select that and hit open. And we're gonna go ahead and pull this down below our video footage. All right. And we're gonna to go to our particular layer. You can go ahead and rename this if you want to. Rename particular. That way you know you know what it is, even though there's, there's only one layer there, but you'll know what it is. So we've got that, we've got our ping image, and what we're gonna do under our particulator is go down to particle, and then hit particle type, sphere, we're gonna hit sprite. And we're gonna go to texture, layer, none, and then we're gonna type, uh, we're gonna select drop. So now, that brings in all our little water droplets, and it's going to look so good, so good. Okay, so now that we've got that selected, we're going to go to, where is it? Time sampling, we'll do current time, <clears throat> and we're going to go to random loop. And we'll turn up the randomness, random seed, to where something that's good we like. That way not all of them are rotating in the same direction, and not all of them are have the exact same look to them okay so we've got a lot of multiple little things here also another thing uh, I would recommend doing is kind of turning down the opacity just a tad so under opacity random just kind of move that up just a little bit that way they don't all look exactly the same and maybe bring down the actual opacity a little bit so they kind of still have that opaque look to them also, uh, size random, I turn that up a little bit because not every single drop is going to be exactly the same size. Right? Am I right? Yes, not every raindrop is the same. So we'll just turn that up just a little bit, maybe into the 30s. 37 looks good. Right, and maybe turn up the opacity again. Yeah, that randomness is gonna look decent. All right, so what this looks like as of right now is we've got our slow motion rain. And I mean, it looks okay, but we need to do a lot of corrections on it. So this sped up, looks a little like this. And then smack, okay. So that's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start color correcting. Uh, the way I colored corrected my footage, we go into levels. I usually use curves, but on this one I'm going to use levels just because there's more gamma corrections. And I'm just going to kind of turn up my black layer a little bit. So my bottom part, I'm going to turn down my mid-tones. So I'm going to get a lot more oomph. I'm also... So you got to, black levels are your far left on the levels, your mid-tones are your middle, and then you can also turn up the highs to get a little bit more contrast, but I don't really want a lot of high levels. So I'm actually gonna hit input white, and I'm gonna turn that up. That way I get more of this darker feel. And then turn up my mid-tones just a tad. And I'm gonna do my output black. I'm gonna turn that down a little more. This way I'm, I look like I'm playing in the rain. I'm also going to change the saturation. So type in saturation, hue saturations, move that over. And I don't want a lot of yellows. So I'll turn the yellows down. As well as my reds. Don't want a lot of red in there. Okay. <clears throat> Now that that's finished, I'm also going to add a tint. So type in tint and drag that over on top of your footage. And that turns it to black and white, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But we're going to pull 
kind of like a lighter blue on top of this. So any of these blues will work. You're going to make this kind of more of a cool setting. And you're going to turn down the amount to tint way down. Turn it into this more rainy, foggy kind of look. And just for safeness, let's go ahead and add a curves layer on top of our hue and saturation and bring in the blue so go to blue under channel let's turn that up just a tad all right so now we have this cool looking cool looking effect but it is not done yet. It is not done because I mean, everything's in focus, but we have this plane here that's out of focus and we have all our focus in the back. So it looks very 2d. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to layer new camera. So we're going to add a camera. Click. Okay. That's going to add a little bit more depth into our scene by Clicking the down arrow on our camera, go to camera options, add depth of field, turn that on. Whenever you turn this on, it's going to create more of that depth. So you're going to have a lot less stuff here in the foreground, a lot less in the background, but you're going to have this middle focus. It's going to look really good. So under mine, I want to turn my aperture up to about 75. That way I have something completely blown out. Well, maybe not so much. Maybe 50 will work better. Yeah, 50 looks pretty good. So this way I have a lot of raindrops in my foreground blurred out and then my raindrops next to me are going to be very solid. So let's check out what that looks like. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like. You have these slow raindrops kind of floating down. But it's not perfect. I think they should be a little faster. So I want to go ahead and make them a little bit quicker. And I'm going to turn up my wind speed just a bit. Go ahead and turn those up. About to negative one. Actually, that's gonna make it slower. Actually, I don't like that. Maybe a little bit more. We're gonna we're just gonna go crazy with this one. I'm gonna turn it up to about twenty-four. Because you want the raindrops to really kind of match everything that's going on in the background. Smack. So this. Cool. All right. Now we are almost finished with this effect. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna, gonna, going to add another tint layer. But we're going to put it on our particular layer. So we'll go hit tint and we'll bring it down on top of particular and we are going to color it so go to map white 2 and let's go ahead and give it kind of a bluer tone Maybe a little less than that Hit OK and map to tint we're gonna bring that down just give it kind of more of a bluish tint because we're out outdoors about 24% looks pretty good. And if you wanted to add to the realism of this, we'll go ahead and hit our motion blur uh, key right here, as well as hit the motion blur on the box. So this is going to add even more of a, of a realism to our effect. All right, so this is kind of what we have. Slow motion and smack, maybe smack. So we've got the slow motion rain. We've got everything on there. Now, one other thing that you can do to give kind of your rain a little bit more oomph, uh, go ahead and type in curves, curves for curves and bring a curvature layer on top of the particular kind of bump up those high tones, make them shine, make them high tones shine. That way you really see the different uh, the differentials between the layers can maybe bring that 
that dark point down on those. So it kind of really gives that kind of highlight to your, your rain particles. All right. So that does it for our rain tutorial for the slow motion portion of the rain tutorial. Now let's move in to the faster stuff. All right. So the faster rain, really, it is as simple as changing a couple of effects or a couple of presets on your particular layer. So go into particular and just move your wind up, your wind speed up a lot. And it's kind of what it looks like with the wind speed up. You can also change the gravity and turn that up as well. And also I would recommend putting more particles in. So move these, like put on a lot of different particles. So up to about a thousand and let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So you just kind of have a really neat fast rainfall. Now, if you don't like how slow this renders, you can also take off the sprite. So go back into your particular later, go to particle, particle type sprite, and you hit just sphere. And that's going to give you more of a bright rain. And you can also turn the opacity down on this. That way it gives you more of that subtle rain effect. So that's going to render a lot quicker. All right, but this is Cherokee Turner over at the Tutorial Grid on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Also check us out at facebook.com slash tutorial grid as well as facebook.com slash avidproductions479. Again, this is Cherokee. Check us out, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.